All right, welcome to VMware Explorer 2024, day three. Uh, John, how you feeling, man? You know, I, I, I feel like I've, I've been here a couple days. I haven't really seen the sun except once. Although actually that might've just been the sphere. <laughs> yeah, I do love that sphere. Uh, no, but uh, John, as I like to say, you know, VMware Explorer, I love coming here because we get to connect with friends old and new. We get to teach, we get to learn, we get to hear what customers are doing uh, and then also get the announcements, talk to customers, partners, anybody with a good story. Uh, and I think we have a, a little bit of all of that on this conversation. We're talking to a good friend of the, of the podcast, a uh, long, long time friend of ours, Victoria Gemma. Victoria, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah. So Victoria, Victoria works in uh, in the field. I, I don't know her whole term, but I know that she is a baller. Uh, she does a lot of good things for this company and she's super passionate about our technology. And so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I'm just here to have a really organic conversation around, you know, what we're doing today in private cloud and full stack automation and, you know, how we're really impacting, you know, the development space with containers and Kubernetes and really getting in with private AI foundation yeah. um, and GPU virtualization. I mean, there's just really a huge suite of benefits in terms of our total package for VMware Cloud Foundation that, you know, I just want to make sure that we're providing that perspective, yeah. right? Because I feel like sometimes that gets lost yeah. a little bit in translation. Well, you have a unique, your position, you have a unique advantage of being like, right there talking to all the customers. So you hear the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, but you also get to get a true pulse of, of how our customers feel and what they actually need. Right. And I think that's vital information, not only for internally, but it's just good to know what people are thinking. So what has been the pulse for you? You've been here all week talking to customers. What, what's, what, what's been the take for you? Yeah, so there's customers here that are fully bought in, they're ready to go, and they're having conversations with us to understand how they can get started. Uh, with VCF 5.2 that we had just launched, uh, you know, a little bit earlier this month, you know, we're now providing the opportunity for brownfield import and conversions, getting into Cloud Foundation a little, a lot easier in terms of existing investments and assets. Um, and so, you know, helping customers really understand what they have by us understanding their environment, by them telling us what it is that they have, how they operate, uh, really understanding, you know, their their workload characteristics, yeah. getting empirical data to, you know, really define their architecture and yeah. understand like how they're leveraging, whether it's bare metal or VMware or anything else. You know, we, we want to get a true understanding of the full data center because we are impactful in the entire data center end to end, right? And we will have an opinion after we do a fully baked assessment um, so that our customers can make a confident and informed decision on the direction they want to go with their environment based on VMware Cloud Foundation or our platforms. Well, and, you know, talking to customers, it's been interesting because there's some that we're seeing here. They're seeing some of the taste of where Nine is going. They're like, how do I get straight to that? Right. <laughs> and then there's others that are like, you know what? I'm kind of happy where I'm at, but I want to be able to be in a nice, safe place to hang out for a while. And frankly, 5.2 being kind of an LTS type release is it's going to be a good position for both customers. They can they can talk to you about how to get there and, and hang out or they can get there and use that as their launch point into the, the nine world. And um, one of the conversations I want to have with you, just as someone who's worked from the field side, that perspective, you know, talking to customers different people are in different places on their journey of where they want to go with this in their transactions. Some of them, you know, maybe they've got a, you know, a, an agreement or a license that's coming up on renewal, you know, tomorrow. Some of them might have stuff that's two or three years out. What are what are some of the timelines that they should bring you in? Because obviously this is talking about assessing and understanding these workloads and making sure that you can advise them on how to do it as efficiently as possible. That's going to take some lead time. But oh, yeah. what, what are the points? What are the, the common touch points for bringing that in or, or having those conversations? No, and that's really critical and really, you know, where the space is, how we can help and impact is very um, agile. Yeah. We can really fit into any timeline. Um, we're here to work at the pace of the customer. So whether I'm coming in or our team's coming in um, when the customer is like six months or two years out from renewal, they just want to now talk to their team because they're like, OK, we just bought you know, yeah. right before everything happened and the changes. So we're good for the next three years. But on let's perpetual. get the value out of that. Yeah. Right. So. But let's get the value out of that. But how how can we start leveraging this platform, you know, and then start planning for that uh, future state? Right. Yeah. And that's where we start having the strategic conversation to start understanding what their future state architecture could look like based on this existing demand 
and based on that roadmap, whether it's three or five years out. Because one thing you know we come to realize is when customers are walking through their roadmap, they're gonna talk to us about their big ticket items that are not gonna change, right? Yeah. These are things that are mandated. They're on the on We've got this compliance requirement on or, the horizon. or this or this these servers are hitting in a life at this point. Yeah. I've got to do a large hardware refresh this year. Right. You know, and well, that's gonna distract me. Right. Or we've got many customers are still doing physical to virtual. I mean, yeah. let's let's not wow. mince words here. I mean, this is still a strategy that customers are aligning to, right? Um, you see that you see the whole gamut, don't you? I see the entire gambit. I see incredibly like cutting edge customers that are ready to implement now, right? Yeah. And then I see customers that want to get there, but they need help, and they're they're going back to the basics, right? And so, where I think we are as a company in terms of we can help everybody, which. Yeah makes me so passionate about this because you know we can go into a customer that's still in the middle of physical to virtual and maybe they're like 60 percent virtualized but their roadmap item is to get 100 percent virtualized in the next two years right and you can and, work, run workshops on hey we're gonna get out hcx and start slurping that in or how we're gonna yeah here's lessons we've learned from other customers 100%. on how to get that faster we go ahead and walk them through the best practices based on whatever vertical they're in whether it's energy finance uh, state, local government, right? Yep. Healthcare. Um, and we really walk them through like their pathways of how they can start optimizing and getting ready for that big migration. But then if customers are like in the middle of, Hey, I just had to renew on the new licensing. Um, we bought it because we saw, you know, we saw a benefit there versus anything else. How do we start getting involved in this? And we're not ready to implement a full private cloud stack yeah. yet, or even import or convert. The great news about that is, is you can still use these these offerings uh, with the licensing that we give you, yeah. and we will work with you and start planning your architecture out. So whether you're a year out, two years out, if you're signing a three to five year contract with us, we're going to start helping you do that design and walking you through what an implementation can look like. But it, it's all about partnership, and we're really here to be a technology partner and to support our customers through the adoption and help them to scale that in perpetuity. Well, and what I like this is this kind of aligns to the subscription message. This sounds like it's an ongoing conversation yep. you're looking for Always. and providing value and not, I, you know, I've been around software and I, I was a buyer, you know, 15 years ago or something. And I remember there were a lot of sales reps who were like, Oh, right. to hang, you know, show up. Okay. Here's a PO. Here's a license key. Goodbye. You know, it's, it's, it was a very perpetual yep. Yep. And, and selling boxes. If you remember that, like selling appliances and boxes, it often led to kind of a hit and run type behavior of, of that interaction. And it looks like that's that's really not the motion we're going for here. It's not the motion. I'm really glad you touched upon that, John, because I, I want to kind of address that a little bit. Okay. I feel like there's still some perception out there. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity to talk about it. So if you really think about where we started when, you know, vCenter 1.0 came out with vMotion, yeah. all that happened in like 03, right? Yeah. Um, and that was really the first instances of actual server virtualization. like. Yeah from a commodity and enterprise perspective, right? And so it got to a point to where reps, you know, that was their motion because customers just saw an invaluable impact there and, and they were getting very good at using the tech. Give me and the V-Motion, give me the HA, maybe sprinkle some DRS on it. It became an it. industry standard. Yeah. And yes. I mean, as we progressed through time, we went from standard OS V-Motions, host to host, to storage V-Motions, yep. to multiple NIC V-Motions, to now Metro cluster V-Motions on storage, where now we can migrate workloads 125 miles apart, as long as we got 10 milliseconds of latency between My, the two migrations sites. Migrations be weird now, it's fun. Like it's. But, but so we've got, we got so good at it and it became a standard and so many people adopted it that, that, you know, unfortunately it became kind of a pattern with account teams to just say, hey, here's your renewal, you know, but now where we are in the market. Here's your hundred V motions, your hundred HAs. Hey, like, here's your you hundred VMwares. You like, let's move on. Yeah. Like, here's your operational quote. Um, but really where we are now in the market is there, there's just a lot of, um, a lot of vendor activity yeah. around providing cloud solutions, whether that is a hyperscaler based or it's a private cloud based or you're in a CSP, uh, wherever it is in the world, right? One of the great things about VMware is the fact that we've been iterating on this since 05. Our first version of a software defined data center came with the Evo rail yep. in 05. That was, that was announced at the 05 Explore, right? And we've come a long way from there. And now nine years later, we're announcing VCF nine. And as an architect, somebody who's been front and center with VCF, um, basically I've been working on it since, uh, you know, 2012, 
I've been architecting it since 2012. Um, oh, so, you, so you've seen some of those. Oh, I remember back then days. it was like enterprise yeah. hybrid cloud. And it's like, okay, I'm going to buy the components. I'm going to buy 150,000 of PSO. And I might get a small cluster that kind of can do some cloudy things. It, yeah. was, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It was wrapped in services. But now things are becoming more agile. It's becoming more uh, more common for customers to have the blueprints. Right. That That's what the whole... Uh, VMware validated designs in 2012 was yeah. for, and now we're in VMware validated solutions. So, you know, if you want to go out and you want to build this on your own from a best practices approach from the company that invented virtualization, um, we're giving that to you, like for free on the internet. I love right? this history lesson, by the way, and it's well, also bringing back good and, and some interesting memories. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's a powerful story because if you really think about the core of what VMware's doing, um, you know, we were the first company to really go carbon neutral for customers by helping them consolidate physical environments yeah. in O3, right? right. Yeah. Whether they believed it or not, whether they knew it or not, right? We were helping save on soft costs, power, scaling. I right? threw a lot of servers in the dumpster, a lot of yeah. like old garbage. I'm you like, recycled them. but yes. that saves yeah. on physical resources, manufacturing, and it helps kind of free up the supply chain for other things, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's all about cause and effect and really where VMware has impacted the market. It's been in just so many undeniable places. And what makes me really excited about what we're doing now is we're able to give our customers the experience that they've been trusting for the last 20 years from an enterprise perspective, from a v, the comfort of vCenter. We're giving you the ability now to maintain, operate, deploy, and remediate um, your own cloud environment. And if you want to emulate that to what a hyperscaler is doing, we're now giving you the ability to do that. And everything is completely laced in very stringent security. So like for 5.2, um, yeah. you know, they just released extensions for, you know, PCI compliance for credit card um, security within workload domain instances, oh, okay. right? Um, and Have the, that like, checklist, get it deployed, show it to your auditor, like, look, leave yeah. me alone. Don't ask me 40 million questions until you've read this. Yeah, so. I mean, there's so many things that if you just go read the release notes, it's like, wow. But here's the great thing as an architect, an engineer, somebody who's a customer, right? I've seen this platform operate um, at the level of our messaging. Like we're not just selling a pipe dream or yeah. waving a magic wand. This is real, this is tangible. Customers can achieve these outcomes based on their their niche needs, their use cases, but we're gonna wrap it in a pre-engineered solution with standard support, and we're gonna give you high availability, and we're gonna give you the protection from ransomware, right? And to me, that's a full, I call it the full golf swing approach. We're, we're not giving you chip shots, whereas single platform approaches were that, yeah. and customers could go build their own cloud, and they did, great. But now we're gonna give you the full golf swing because customers are now implementing container solutions and global namespaces. And, you know, they're really getting into AI and they want to anchor their AI workloads, you know, that they're training models and even inferencing, right? They want to anchor that into secure locations, right? Um, and they want to make sure that their data, they have control over it all the time. And that's one of the areas that VMware's always been very good at. Let's give you an agnostic approach to give you data control over your workloads portability, security, and ease of use. Yeah. And it's been, you know, there's been issues, right? There's been challenges, but we always meet our customers at their demand, right? Uh, and one of the prime examples- So they need, to, they, need, they need a demand, they need to call it up. So. Well, they do because VCF was really iterated based yeah, on customer based on demand. Customer, and yeah. I'm gonna give you one more history lesson. So in 2016, um, you know, customers didn't want, you know, they wanted to go further than 125 mile uh, migration yeah, of yeah, workloads yeah. in a metro. Well, in 2016, we gave it to them in spades um, with, you know, they could go from basically West Coast to East Coast um, as long as they were within 150 millisecond latency, which is the vCenter standard that we all know today, wow, right? Okay. And um, some of the studies and use cases that have come out of that over the years, I think a lot of it, like everybody's just very used to it and it's just like now we all just expect it. It's, it's like when we face. turn on the TV yeah. or have a cell it's phone really, we, and we, that's great. We need to start iterating versions on vMotion and be like, this is uh, vMotion 15.7. Like, I don't know. It's uh, Well, there's a reason why we're just doing v yeah, yeah. V Everything's VCF just v 9. Yeah, yeah, VCF 9, and, yeah. VCF 9. But no, there's a lot of like, and. I'm in, I'm in the technical marketing group. There's a lot of stuff that we do try to service in blogs and do that stuff and put content out. And sometimes people see it, sometimes people don't. But there's there's some stuff out there. I call them like bonus features or things that like just didn't make the cut of there's only so much we can talk about simultaneously right. that, that just comes out. 
and I know some, it may, there may be a perception that like, oh, VMware stopped focusing on vSphere or, you know, they're more focused on all these other add-ons, but it's, there's very much a very strong focus now. And there has been a steady iteration. We just didn't always necessarily message it. Yeah. And like, to your point about, you know, did we stop focusing on vSphere? No, we didn't because in nine, if you go and read the, the brief yeah, yeah. on the blog and what we just announced, um, Intel just came out with their trust domain extensions. Yeah. We're, we're going to support that in nine. So we continue to improve the platform that's always been a flagship offering, but like now we're lacing in the software-defined networking approach that we provided in 2012. Yeah. The software-defined storage solutions that we de uh, that we defined in 2014. And then in uh, VCF nine, they've got a, a separate kind of project where they've, they're have they improving VVOLs so that now we can have a consistent yeah, outcome of VASA generation, providers. Yeah, so the next generation VVOL's blog out. Uh, we'll yeah. put that on the show notes. That's a great announcement. I'm pretty yeah. excited about it because that's been a that's been an issue. It's like which OEM supports what version of VASA yeah, yeah, versus yeah, yeah, yeah. what version of vSphere. Um, and now, like, based on the focus, it's to give you a kind of a congruent outcome there. Yeah. And, and when you're virtualizing volumes, we don't care what your protocol is from transport. Yeah, yeah. You just present us the storage and we're going to treat it as principal. Exactly right. right? Yeah. And it's, it's really, just a call. <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, and I know that's, you know, that, that might be cliche, but we continue to innovate. We continue to set the tone in the market. We continue to make a difference and help customers. And that's what I'm so passionate for because I see it happen. The fact that we're able to impact operations the way we are, and, and really help customers solve major problems to improve, you know, their outcomes, their bottom line. Um, I mean, that goes out into the communities that we all live in. And, um, and it, it really, it's, it's a really rewarding experience to work here at this time and to be here. Um, and I feel so fortunate to be uh, with these people and with you guys and being able to help people uh, in the technology space like oh this. Oh my goodness, you are doing good work, man. It's fantastic. <laughs> we are so glad that you joined us. A little pep talk today. Yeah, you no, know, I hey. mean, I, I, we started with a great history lesson. Uh, I'm inspired. I, you know, I was going to ask you what you were passionate about, but boy, you just showed us. And so, yeah. Victoria, we always love seeing you. We're Thank so you. thankful that you're back here at VMware Explorer this year. And, uh, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye. All right.